fellow Nigerians, I salute you all. I'm Jacob Tewa Jingi, the convener, New Nigeria Agenda. I've been talking about five ways or strategies with which Nigerians can bounce back politically and remain politically relevant between now and the next election. Today in this video, I'll be talking about the fifth and final strategy. Want to hear it? The Nigerian people's power of peaceful protest, call for resignation, and self-defense. Yes, this is three-dimensional. To start with, peaceful protest is democratic, is constitutional. When you are not satisfied with the outcome of a process, you protest. For instance, if you feel that justice is not being done in a particular case, or you feel that your rights are being trampled upon, whatever is the case, if you feel justly aggrieved, you can take to peaceful protest. Remember I say peaceful protest, not violent protest. A good example of one of the things to protest. Recently, the president of this country traveled out on what is said to be a private visit, but funded from public treasury, right? And then he's not a private citizen anymore. He's the president of the country. So why did he travel out? Nobody knows why. So the question of why, if the president cannot answer to it from wherever, can warrant a protest, a peaceful protest, because Nigerians deserve to know. Because the president has not informed Nigerians, there are lots of speculations, and that is dangerous. Because with speculations, one is uncertain. Who's right? Who's wrong? Did the president travel out on head grounds? Nobody knows. But he was elected to serve for four years. Every day of these four years, he's not permitted to abscond. And so if he cannot be there, at least he should speak to Nigerians. And especially when Nigerians demand to know. Somebody came out to say the absence of the president does not matter. It's a capital lie. Anything can happen in the absence of the president. And this is one of the things that could happen. The military could decide that this is the best time to take over. It has happened even in the history of this country, right? Yes, but that's not all. There's also what we call the cabalization of governance. In the absence of the president, no matter how influential and powerful the president has been, things begin to shift dramatically. You see a cabal emerging. For instance, the president needs to sign a document. He's not there. Anybody signs it. Sometimes it's from the president's family, sometimes even the president's family doesn't know about it. A whole lot, a whole lot could happen in the absence of the president. And it's not healthy for a democracy. Now, assuming the president is sick, and anybody can be sick, nothing stops him from handing over temporarily 
to his vice in acting capacity pending when he returns. That's how it's normally done everywhere in the world. And our case mustn't be different. We say we're practicing democracy. Let's practice it the way democracy is practiced. Right? So, assuming it's sickness, if the president is not around for three days, four days, five days, Nigerian citizens have the right to embark on peaceful protest. According to our constitution, in the event of sickness, the president has to submit to a medical panel that will satisfy his fitness to continue in office. So Nigerian citizens can go on protest to demand that. It's within the law and it's also in the best interest of the president, not just the country. Right? Then there are so many reasons why people could go on peaceful protest. Peaceful protest can also be seen as an alternative to... Um, uh, one of those other strategies, recall, right? You could decide to go on peaceful protest and call for the resignation of not just a legislator, but an executive member of government. And that is one of the best approaches to take. There, there are no uh, negative repercussions whatsoever. Resign peacefully. Go your way. You are no longer needed in that office. So let nobody go through any more stress, right? So it's one of the things that could happen. If the recall, for instance, fails, the people could decide to embark on peaceful protests and call for the resignation of a legislator who is not performing to their satisfaction. Right? So, call for resignation, of course, should not be arbitrary. For instance, the offenses for which a sitting president or governor could be impeached. Yes, such offenses should warrant call for resignation. And like I say, that serves everybody's stress. You don't need to go through one procedure or the other to get things done. But everybody gets it done and moves on. Then I speak of self-defense. In Nigeria, it has become inevitable that those who are going on peaceful protests must also prepare for self-defense. Politicians are ruthless, especially when it comes to responding to calls for resignation. We hear what the former president, Buhari, came out to say years after the NSAS protest, that those small boys wanted to remove him from power. That is the mentality, the entitlement. They feel that place is their right. Nobody should tell them to leave. Whereas the citizens are supposed to be king. And the politicians are supposed to be servants. But in Nigeria, the opposite is always the case. So you see that even the police and military who are sometimes suffering the same justices with the rest of the people, they are told to shoot the people and they do it. In civilized countries of the world, like what is uh, what has happened in the U.S., the uh, murder of a black man, Floyd, which led to the Black Lives Matter movement. That's where it happens. The, the, the security officers in question lose their jobs automatically. They are put in jail. They are tried. Now, it doesn't happen everywhere. In some countries, you have a, a, a guerrilla welfare that could result from that, where the people decide to target those specific uh, officers themselves, or even fight uniformed men and women. So, that is even a warning to the police, too. When people are on peaceful protest, they're exercising their democratic and constitutional right. They're not your enemies, your duty to protect them. Uh, without them, you don't have a work to do again. So if you kill them, what's your work? So, this is a very powerful approach. 
and I recommend it mostly as a last strategy, especially when Nigerians have tried every other alternative and it fails. They can take to peaceful protests, call for resignation, and with a backup self-defense plan. I hope this helps. Thank you so much for listening. And please do like, comment, and share this video in the hope that more like this will come your way. Bye for now. Thank you for listening and God bless you.